the armor worn by the clone troopers of the Grand Army of the Republic has undergone several significant phases, from its introduction in the cloning facilities on Kamino to its various adaptations throughout the Clone Wars. Today, we'll dive into the evolution of the iconic white suits, from the Mandalorian-inspired Phase 1s to the Phase 2, and even the lesser-known Phase 3 as we near the era of the Galactic Empire. This is every single clone trooper armor phase explained. Phase 1 clone trooper armor was designed by Kaminoan armorsmiths with some input from the template for the army, the bounty hunter Jango Fett. As a result, it loosely resembled Mandalorian shock trooper armor, specifically with the helmet's T-shaped visor. It also notably featured a fin on top which was said to house a comlink, and may have been a nod to the real-life crest of Roman gladiator helmets. The entire clone armor kit consisted of 20 form-fitting plates, made of a lightweight plastoid alloy composite. Those plates were sealed to a black, temperature-controlled bodysuit, providing relief from the extreme heat and cold. The suit was also pressurized, offering temporary protection against the vacuum of space. A full set weighed just under 40 kilograms, or 88 pounds, and was said to cost 2,000 credits per suit to produce. Because the armor would be used by an army of genetically identical men, only one size was needed. Early in the war, the majority of clone troopers wore plain white kits, with colored stripes reserved for officers depending on their rank. Yellow signified commander, red for captain, blue meaning lieutenant, and lastly green for sergeant. As the war progressed, clones were more free to customize their armor to reflect their personal taste or unit affiliation. Other gear was also available for customization, but usually reserved for officers, including visors, rangefinders, pauldrons, commas, enhanced communications gear, flashlights, and jetpacks. So, why replace Phase 1? The Phase 1 clone trooper armor was said to be heavy, uncomfortable, and not very well liked by clone troopers, hence it often being referred to by non-clone GAR personnel as a body bucket. It was said to be particularly uncomfortable when sitting, which could be key for taking cover or just moving around when on the front lines. This inconvenience was supposedly due to the Kaminoans' lack of knowledge of human anatomy and ergonomics. Your armor, it's shiny and new, just like you. Phase 1.5 armor filled the gap between Phases 1 and 2. This armor was worn exclusively by the Republic's elite ARC troopers. Because of their status as the best of the best in the GAR, they essentially served as beta testers for features later adopted into the Phase 2 armor. The Phase 1.5 helmet retained the sides, back, and fin of the standard Phase 1 helmet, with the front resembling the face of the Phase 2 helmet, but with a little bit more of a triangular structure, while the rest of the armor remained largely unchanged. Given it was worn by the advanced recon commandos, we only ever saw most of the suit buried underneath extra arc equipment like pauldrons, commas, backpacks, and extra plating. Logically, we now arrive at Phase 2. Again, developed by the Kaminoan armorsmiths about one year into the Clone Wars, Phase 2 came at a higher price tag of 3,000 credits per suit to produce. That's 50% or 1,000 credits more than the Phase 1 set. It quickly spread through the ranks of the Grand Army of the Republic and was adopted by nearly all clone troopers near the war's end. Phase 2 armor was a vast improvement to the Phase 1, with lighter yet stronger plating, while being much more comfortable for the clones to wear and move around in. Phase 2 armor's many improvements likely came both from feedback courtesy of the clone troopers themselves, and the Kaminoans becoming more familiar with human anatomy and the rigors of combat. The new armor also incorporated a more advanced air filtration and oxygen supply system, polarized lenses, and an enunciator to make speech more comprehensible. In addition, the boots were magnetized and incorporated a graph field alternator to ensure stability. The armor and the bodysuit could still be pressurized, providing temporary protection against non-breathable atmospheres, though it was not as pressurized as its predecessor. When used in conjunction with an external respirator, the clones could last longer in a vacuum environment wearing Phase 2 compared to the Phase 1's built-in life support system. As with the earlier Phase 1, clones customized the new armor to their liking, using special markings and color patterns to denote unit affiliation. This trend was introduced by the Jedi Generals, who encouraged the clones to embrace their individuality, 
just as they did by taking up nicknames as opposed to their given numbers. The Phase 2 Clone Trooper armor also allowed for more modular attachments for specialized units within the Grand Army of the Republic. For example, the Clone Paratroopers trained for high-altitude drops. We have a separate video diving into all of the specialized clone variants that we'll be sure to link at the end of this video. Behind the scenes, Phase 2 armor was meant to act as a fusion between the Phase 1 Clone Trooper and Imperial Stormtrooper's armor, representing how much closer we were getting to the rise of the Empire and eventually the original trilogy. Just as the Three Years of War have brought the Republic to the brink of becoming the Empire, the Clone Troopers look even more like their authoritarian successors. One clone trooper with perhaps the most unique in the GAR is the undisputed most popular clone, Captain Rex. He actually combined aspects of the Phase 1 and Phase 2 into his own hybrid. You can actually see the weld marks on his helmet and chest plate. There's some high quality reference images out from the Darkness on Umbara concept art gallery that conveniently break down the specifics. Let's take a look. Beginning with the helmet, Rex's hybrid features the classic T-visor of his Phase 1 as a base. The mouth and chin area are similar to the Phase 2, just slightly lowered and modified in order to fit the shape of the Phase 1 T-visor. The chest plate is a little less obvious and has far less context given to it, but still cool nonetheless. Maybe Rex just found it to be more comfortable or felt that it offered better protection. I mean, it did come in clutch for him once before. As for the backstory and reasoning behind Rex's unique armor, here's Clone Wars creator Dave Filoni's explanation. Rex keeps trying to wear the same armor. He's hybrided his old armor into what you see now, and we, we thought that'd be kind of a good character trait for Rex to have, is that he's welded his armor. It makes him more unique. When previewing Clone Wars Season 4 with IGN, Filoni also said, quote, I create this backstory for D. Bradley Baker, where I was telling him that Rex doesn't believe that the new armor is really that good. He sees it as more prefabricated, where the original armor, you know, how classic stuff, the craftsmanship is a little better. So Rex cut his old armor up, and he welded together parts of the new helmet, and his armor is a hodgepodge of old gear and new gear. So it's kind of like his character. He's like this veteran now, and he's got little kill marks all over his armor. I think Rex is becoming something of a little legend. He's such a long-term survivor of the Clone War, but it was time for a new look. All in all, it gives Rex a one-of-a-kind profile when standing alongside his brothers, especially for those with a keen enough eye to pick up on it. Phase 3 Clone Trooper armor, or perhaps more accurately, Storm Trooper armor, appeared in the opening mission of the Force Unleashed video game as Darth Vader hunted down Starkiller's father on Kashyyyk. They have two slightly different appearances depending on the gaming system that you play on. The Xbox and PlayStation versions had plain white armor, while the ones to appear on the Nintendo Wii had blue-striped 501st armor. The Phase 3 helmet is much closer to the Imperial Stormtroopers, while still maintaining some characteristics of the Phase 2, most notably the visor and strip along the nose. While that version of the Phase 3 isn't considered canon, the closest thing we have shows up in the Bad Batch, worn by the TK Troopers, or first human recruits to enlist in the Empire, as part of Project War Mantle. TK Trooper helmets contained a single visor with two lenses, foregoing the Mandalorian-derived T-shaped visors of Clone Trooper helmets. It also contained a raised ridge that ran from directly above the visor to the back of the helmet. The design of the TK Stormtrooper armor was heavily inspired by the original concept art of Stormtroopers for the original trilogy, designed by the legendary Ralph McQuarrie. And so came the Imperial Stormtroopers and their eventual First Order successors. But it was quite clearly far inferior to the gear worn by the Clone Troopers, as explained by veterans Captain Rex and Kanan Jarrus. I would never be on their side or wear that junk armor. This garbage is nothing like clone armor. Looks a little tight on you, old man. Yeah. At least I know how to wear it. Want more Clone Trooper content? Head on over to our Clone Trooper lore playlist. It'll be in the end screen or linked in the description. If you enjoy our content and want to help us to produce more, consider checking out our channel membership linked in the description or by hitting the join button on our channel homepage. It comes with some pretty sweet perks too. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server linked in the description. If you enjoyed today's Star Wars video, we've got more on the screen for you right now. Also make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe to join the Red Squadron.
Until next time, thanks for watching and may the force be with you. Red 5, standing by.